Good afternoon. Welcome. And uh, thank you for being here with so, so many people for this ridiculous talk about I, as a software developer, why am I a roller coaster addict? Do we have some roller coaster addicts in the room here? Nobody. You're just interested in uh, looking at a nerd like me. Okay, perfect. So, very quickly, I have 15 minutes. My name is Johnny. Uh, I'm a developer. I work as a consultant in Belgium. I'm an MVP. Um, but more specifically, I like to travel the world and ride as many roller coasters as I can. My number is not that high yet because my wife also wants to travel with me. So we need to basically, uh, it needs to basically work for the two of us. So I'm just traveling around, um, visiting places, visiting conferences, and then try to do as many theme parks as I can. As I told you, my wife is also a roller coaster enthusiast. So uh, luckily we can do this uh, with the two of us. Um, we even got married uh, in Fantasialand, which is a theme park in Germany. Uh, so we spent the whole day uh, there with our friends and family, uh, which is which is really fun to do. Now, if I look at software development and where we come from, we could so see something like this. Like we were using uh, assembly languages and every manufacturer or every hardware vendor had its own different little language that we could use as a developer to um, create software applications. So you basically needed to learn very specifically what to do for what um, hardware. And if I look at the history of uh, roller coasters, um, pretty much the same thing happened. In, um, in about like 200 years ago, we started doing roller coasters. Actually, um, if you translate roller coaster to Dutch, um, it's Achtbahn, which roughly translates to a track. Uh, but in, in, uh, in the French speaking people, they call it, uh, an, uh, um, I forgot, uh, Montagne Russe, which is a Russian mountain. Uh, so the, the Russians in St. Peters, Petersburg, they built like mountains and they were sliding down with ice, ice cubes and, 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 and boxes and all different kinds of things. So they basically designed the first roller coaster. But in this time, like late 1800s, um, all these different people that were designing roller coasters, they were do doing the same thing like we, do, uh, like we did with uh, software development. They were just building their own. There were no rules. There was no health and safety. They were just um, building these cool things. This is one of the early ones. I think it's, it's uh, in, in the United States. It didn't have corners. It just went all the way up and then it shifted over to the other side and then it came back uh, the other side. Very cool. There's also a, a theme park in the Netherlands, which is called the Waarbeek, and they built the first steel roller coaster in Europe all by themselves. So they used old tram tracks, old tram tracks, and they built it completely themselves. Again, not really a lot of health and safety there, but it actually still runs today. It's from, uh, it's from the 1920s. Then people, of course, they wanted to do cooler and more complicated things, so they were uh, started to creating loopings um, in roller coasters even more than 100 years ago. I really like this ad, but it, it says that it is uh, safe and it travels at a rate of 100 miles an hour. I hope not, because you will break your neck um, if you go to s through such a small loop at 100 miles an hour. Um, but yeah, in software development, we basically got, um, we got better. We designed programming languages and we got um, applications out there that all looked kind of similar. We had these console kinds of applications. We had like these fake user interfaces. And about the same time um, in roller coaster history, we were designing roller coasters that basically also had like a standard. Um, throughout most of the 20th century, so beginning 1900 until the 1960s, we were doing roller coasters in wood and they were all the same thing. Uh, they were all basically the same. They use uh, wooden tracks with uh, steel plates on top of them so that you could have a roller coaster cart uh, riding them. This very specific roller coaster is in, uh, in, in Copenhagen in Denmark. And if you look very carefully, it even has a guy sitting in the end with the black shirt. He's the brake guy. So he has to manually brake uh, to not break out of the corners, uh, which is also still operating today, including the guy in the black shirt. This is uh, one from here, one from the UK. This is Black Blackpool Pleasure Beach, one of my favorite theme parks because they also have very old roller coasters there. And the oldest there is also from the 1920s. It hurts like hell because I'm too large, um, but I'm very happy that these standard wooden roller coasters are still running, uh, running today, which is very cool. 
Now, if we look at the landscape of roller coasters throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s and so on, we had many companies building all kinds of roller coasters. So this is just a list of uh, the ones that I actually know about and follow. Um, and we had the same thing with programming languages and, and technologies for software development. We got a couple of standards, a couple of companies, a couple of programming languages to do um, software development. And because we have those roller coasters, but also the software that we create can become more complex because we have standards. We can build uh, on top of those standards. And this is also a picture from Blackpool Pleasure Beach again, which is uh, still the largest roller coaster in the UK. Um, but Thorpe Park is actually building a new one right now. And it will be, I think, one meter higher than this one or something. So unfortunately, for Blackpool. Um, because of those standards, we could now also create loopings. Um, this is actually the, one of the first steel loopings in Six Flags Magic Mountain in uh, Los Angeles, um, which is a revolution from Schwarzkopf, a German company. And if you look very carefully, the looping is not uh, completely round. It's called a, a clothoid loop, and it actually helps with reducing the g-forces. The That's why I told you in that image from before, if you have a, a perfectly round loop and you go into that loop uh, 100 miles an hour, you will definitely break your neck. Um, in this case, it it's smooths very slowly upwards, and then the, the shortest turn is at the top, where the g-force is then lowest, because you lose a lot of speed going into this kind of loop. So again, we have standards, and we're building uh, upon those standards. Software applications became even more complex. Our users wanted to have uh, better experiences. And with roller coasters, it's the same thing. Better rules, better health and safety. Roller coasters could get higher. This is uh, Europa Park in Germany. Uh, and their gig giga coaster from BNM. This is um, a lot of loopings. Again, you, the UK has the record for the most loopings on a single roller coaster. This is 14 loopings in um, Elton Towers. And of course, we added some uh, theming. So this is a bike ride. It looks like a bike ride, but it's a roller coaster. Now, from the 2000s onwards, we've seen a lot of design patterns in roller coaster design. Basically, every manufacturer today is doing the same thing, but their own little flavor based on these design patterns, just like we have in uh, roller coaster design. Loopings, I already told you about loopings. We see these vertical loopings everywhere, and there's always, they're always the same shape, the, the, the clothoid shape. But this is actually a very special kind of roller coaster. This is a, a roller coaster that gets launched. It's also from Schwarzkopf, it's, it's quite old. One of the oldest one is also in, uh, still in Belgium, but one time it had an accident and the train was actually on the top and it stayed on the top and people were upside down for about two hours, which is not a good idea. Um, and today it's completely enclosed inside of a building. So when it happens again, it's easier to get them out. Um, but the cool thing about this first launched roller coaster is it was launched with a cable. And the cable was actually um, connected to a large concrete block that fell into a very deep pit um, just to get the force to pull the train forward. Uh, very cool, very old uh, concept. Today, of course, we still have la launched roller coasters, but we use magnetic um, um, little um, limb uh, panels. So th those are electromagnets and they will uh, force the train uh, to go forward uh, very quickly. So a little bit more modern. Um, of course, we have all of these things that every manufacturer uses. We have brakes, we have brake sections, we have switch tracks. Maybe you don't know, but a roller coaster has different brakes throughout its entire concourse. Um, and the idea is that if you have multiple trains on the same uh, roller coaster, that basically only one train can be inside of a brake section. So if you have two brakes, only one train can be in between those two brakes. And if uh, and there, there's a computer system involved, uh, and it, it knows where all the trains are. Um, so basically, when a train has not left its, its block, something happened, and the next train will be stopped by those next uh, brakes by those, uh, that next break section. It actually went wrong in the UK a couple of years ago with the Smiler at Elton Towers, which has the 14 loopings. Uh, the coaster train did not uh, got completely through one of the loopings and it rolled back. And the system was actually failing that day 
very often, I mean, the computer system was failing. And the people who were running um, the roller coaster, they were sick and tired, and they thought, it, again, it's a software issue. And then they manually overrode the security of that roller coaster without actually watching the train because it was stranded. And the next train actually crashed onto that first one. So yeah, software is very important, and people are even more important. So you always have to be sure before doing stuff like this. Um, what else can I tell about this? Well, basically, wooden roller coasters still exist today, and the design pattern for wooden roller coasters is a lot of hills. A lot of hills. Why? If you have, if you have speed, if you only have a restraint that goes over your uh, legs, and you have hills, you have a lot of what we call airtime. And airtime is fun because it feels like you're flying. And there's two kinds of airtime. There's ejector airtime, where, where it seems like you're just flying into the air, and because you only have the restraints over your uh, legs, um, you basically come loose from your chair and it feels like you're going to um, be thrown away. Uh, very cool. But another cool thing is that if you have a very good roller coaster designer, it has floater airtime instead of ejector airtime. And floater airtime is when the uh, vertical g force is equal to the gravity. And then you, it actually feels like you're floating in the air. You're not. Uh, get, you're not getting thrown upwards, you're just floating in the air. And it actually happens from just before the top of the hill, and it keeps you in the air until you're all the way down. So it really feels like you're, you're flying. Very cool. Um, this is also a roller coaster that I like very much. I think it's, it's, it's also here in, in London every year uh, with uh, Winter Wonderland. Um, it's the largest mobile roller coaster in the world. It's by Barth, which is uh, a company in Germany. Uh, and they bought this roller coaster many years ago. It uses uh, about 60 trucks to drive it around Europe, and they can actually build it on a fairground uh, on a few days. And it has five loopings, which is crazy for a fairground roller coaster. Um, I already talked to you about loopings and design patterns. There's many, many, many more that you will see on, on many roller coasters. This is what we call um, another kind of looping. This is a corkscrew looping, which is also uh, uh, very fun to do. This is an inline twist, also something you, you will basically see from all the roller coaster manufacturers. You will just ride through the inline twists um, as a looping. There's a different kind of inline twist, which is called a hardline roll. It's not a corkscrew, it's smaller. And it's called a hardline roll because basically your heart will be the center of your gravity. So you will, the train will basically turn around the middle of your body, which is also a very cool experience. And it will give you some hang time. If you don't have over the shoulder restraints, you can just keep your hands loose and you will be hanging uh, in the air for quite some time. Um, Inverted roller coasters is also a design pattern that you will see for, from almost all manufacturers. This is one of the first ones by, um, by a, a company from the United States. Um, it's basically just a normal roller coaster cart, but you're sitting inside of it and it's suspended beneath the rails. This one is from a, a Dutch company called Vekoma. Um, here you have loose legs uh, and you're swinging from left to right which is also kind of an inverted coaster. This one is from a Swiss manufacturer, the same concept, but they put four people next to each other instead of two. So the trains are a little bit larger, heavier, faster, larger G-forces, um, very intense ride. Again, also in Elton Towers here in the UK. This is Nemesis. Then roller coaster manufacturers got crazy with different train designs. This is a stand-up roller coaster in the United States. You're standing up in the train. For me, it's quite painful because I'm too large, but I always try to circumvent the rules. Um, so, bit, bit bit weird, but you're actually standing up. Here is your sitting, but you're, it's a it's a floorless roller coaster train, so your feet feet are dangling. Um, this is another uh, manufacturer. This is uh, from B&M, the Swiss manufacturer. This one is from Intamin. It's one from Liechtenstein. Um, so, different kind of design, but the same concept really. You can do multiple different roller coasters integrated into one. There's one suspended and there's one normal one that have the same looping. Um, there's these crazy, one, crazy ones from a German manufacturer that has, have vertical drops. And then again, vertical drop on a roller coaster, again a design pattern. Everyone is doing it. This one is from Gerstlauer. You can see that from the tower it's a vertical drop. Actually it's beyond vertical. It's a little more than vertical. Um, this one is from Vekoma, also the, the Dutch manufacturer, very old one. It's called a tilting coaster. You ride on top until the brakes, hopefully the brakes will get you, and then it will tilt down uh, and it will lose the brakes and you will fall straight down. 
This one is the same concept, but then from B&M, the Swiss manufacturer again. This is also from the UK, uh, Elton Towers called Oblivion. Actually the first drop coaster from B&M. Um, and they put six or eight or even 12 people next to each other. And they have a special chain that will hold the cart for a few seconds up there to make you appreciate the view right before falling down into Oblivion in this case. This is the same kind of roller coaster, but this one is more themed. It's in the, it's in, uh, the Netherlands. It's called Baron 1898, um, which is the same concept, but it's themed as you are a mining person and you get dropped down into the coal mine. Another design pattern that almost every uh, manufacturer has, this is a flying roller coaster. This is one of the most painful roller, roller, coaster, roller coasters that I did. Uh, it's from an Italian manufacturer. Um, it's called a volare, and basically you're inside of this weird cage. Um, you need to walk up this ladder, and then you need to hold these bars. And then when the, the roller coaster train actually starts, uh, it, will, it, will, um, it will pivot you upwards, and then you have like a flying feeling inside of a cage. Um, your head gets thrown around, you will basically hit every metal the, uh, surrounding your head. Very, very nice. This is another concept from the Dutch manufacturer, uh, Vekoma. Left, on the left top side, you can see that you're in a lying position, but first the, 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 the seats are upright, so you just sit with your back to the front, and then it will tilt you backwards. And you will go head first up a lift hill, and then on top of the lift hill, the track will turn around 180 degrees, and then you're flying with your arms and legs free, um, which is okay. It's not that comfortable, but it's okay. BNM also has a flying coaster. Again, the UK was the first um, flying coaster from BNM, again in Elton Towers. Um, but this one is in the United States, and this was the best feeling that I ever had because in this flying coaster, you're facing forward with your back against um, the, the, the track on top. And this is a looping that's actually kind of a reverse looping because you go head first and the looping goes down and then you go on, on your back, which is very scary, but very cool. And then the latest, the latest uh, technology, this one is designed again by Vekoma, the Dutch manufacturer, and is in Fantasialand in Germany. Um, it's the new kind of flying coaster. This is the most um, comfortable flying coaster I've ever been on. On the right hand top side, you can see that the roller coaster track is sideways. You just have the seating position and then it get, gets launched. And while you are getting launched, the track rotates 90 degrees and the train rotates 90 degrees with that until you have your flying position. So you almost don't notice that you're going from a sitting position into a flying position. You're just like this and then look, you're like that and you're speeding up and you have all the rest of the track for you. So flying coasters, very cool. Then you have spinning coasters again. Uh, fairgrounds have lots of spinning coasters and all manufacturers have spinning coasters. This is from Mauer, a German company. This is from Mac, also a German company. Um, this is time, uh, the time something um, in Silver Do Dollar City in the United States. It's an extreme spinning coaster. So it has loopings and it has you spinning around uh, until you basically throw up. We also have a new one in Belgium, in Plopsalanta Panna at the seaside, which is basically the same one as the one uh, in the United States. Then we have wing coasters. Uh, these are roller coasters that have you in a wing position next to the track. This is one of the first ones from Intamin in Spain, uh, Furious Baco. Um, this is one in the Netherlands also, um, Phoenix in Toverland. This is a modern B&M uh, flying coaster, and those are, those are great. You really have, again, that flying feeling, and it's a little bit scared, be scary because you're on the side of the track, especially when they um, rotate you through these very narrow uh, theming elements. It looks like you're gonna die, but actually you're not. You're just flying through, very cool. Then we have launch coasters that are obscenely high. This one is in, um, in Cedar Point in the uh, United States. But of course, uh, other theme parks then want to build larger ones or bigger ones. This one is in uh, New York in the United States. I don't know in, in miles, um, but it's, it's it basically um, accelerates you towards a 200 kilometers an hour and then you go all the way up and every time I do this I get a blackout on the top um, I and then I wake up in, on the brake section basically so I never experienced going down because I always have a blackout this is actually accelerated again with a wire 
not with magnetic um, uh, pieces because they can't make them strong enough. So this is a wire um, and the engine for that uh, winch basically looks like this. It's an hydraulic engine that very quickly pulls the wire to make that train accelerate to 200 kilometers an hour. The fastest roller coaster in the world from the same manufacturer is in Abu Dhabi. I was here two years ago. I mean, I was in Abu Dhabi two years ago. It accelerates up to 260 kilometers an hour and you get a safety goggle. I queued and I got um, denied boarding because I was too tall. And then we have all kinds of tricky things. This is uh, a roller coaster that features a drop track. So you basically ride into a building, the train stops, you have no idea what's going on, and then the entire track falls down, including the train. It's very fun if you don't know that it's going to happen. Very cool. Um, if, you're, if you're not really into roller coasters, there is actually one in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one. Uh, just go around, ride all the roller coasters in this country, and you will find it. And then finally, I think with software development, we are using design patterns, just like roller coaster engineers are using design patterns. But we come today at a stage where us developers, but also the roller coaster designers, they say, fuck it, we're just going to do crazy shit. Um, we don't need design patterns, we're all going to do our own little thing. And this is a new roller coaster designer called Rocky Mountain Constructions, they're from the uh, United States. And they basically convert wooden coasters into um, more modern wooden coasters, like wooden coasters with insane kind of loopings. This one is in Kolmarden in Sweden. Um, and for example, they do stuff like this. This looks quite normal. When you do a, a turn, the track is, is banked to reduce g-forces. But you don't really see it from this picture, but the track does not come from here. The track comes from all over there. So the banking is the wrong way. So the train banks to the wrong uh, side, so you basically get thrown out the train this direction, so it feels like you're just getting catapulted into the air. And the cool thing with Rocky Mountain construction, they never do over-the-shoulder restraints. They only do restraints over your legs. So you're completely loose, you get thrown out of the train, or at least it looks like you're getting thrown out of the, of the train, and it's a hell of an experience. This is a new one in Poland, which I also visited uh, last year, and if you, the, the, the top one is the lift hill, to give you some speed, of course. And then the one in the bottom is a, is, a, is a very weird looping. It's a looping that takes five, six, seven seconds and you're on your head and you're just very slowly, the train will go through that looping. You can just watch your partner when you're upside down, hanging from the train. Um, very, very crazy rides these, but very cool. Again, if they can add bumps and weird corners, they, would, they will do it. Uh, I'm just not sure how long the trains will actually live because it looks very hard on, on the wheels, I guess. Um, they even have these cool moments where you can high-five the other train um, if you want, like looping around each other, stuff like that. All right, um, with this, I think my time is up, so I'm going to um, cut, cut it here. Uh, basically, I just wanted to have some fun, just wanted to talk about my hobby, uh, just show you some pictures, and hopefully um, you, get, you get to ride some roller coasters in this country and all over the world. So thank you.